Hey friends, welcome back. Um, so I've got an interesting project coming up and I figured that I would shoot video on it. So uh, today I'm gonna be modifying one of my favorite boxes to integrate of all time, the Triplight RS1215. Um, I spec these boxes for pretty much every install that I do. Um, and I took one out of a previous install that has the 12 foot power cable cut off. Um, to, uh, to modify for a project that I have coming up. So um, this is going into an installed touring um, video rack that's going out on tour with an artist. Um, my problem is uh, metalworking, the metalworking that we do has been, been very difficult to come by the past couple of weeks. Uh, or I should say this year, it's taking months and to get stuff back from anodizing. So uh, with my looming rush date, I, uh, I need to substitute a box that I have on order um, by modifying this one. Um, so what we're gonna do is, um, or I should say, let's start here. This box is a normal power distribution box. It has six outlets on the front, six outlets on the back. Um, and it comes with normally a 12 foot power cord, which I took this from another install and it already has a little guy and you'll see why this is important here in a second. Um, so this is gonna go in the bottom space of a rack. Um, what I need to do with this is, is um, I'm gonna put a power con in here. Uh, so what this is gonna accomplish as it's gonna be a, a power distribution unit for the rack and then it's also gonna be the main import source of power. Um, so I'm gonna take this guy open and uh, I'm gonna take this guy apart and show you what's on the inside and uh, maybe this will make a little bit more sense as to what we're up to. Okay, moment of truth. Nice. I've actually never taken one of these apart before. Um, they have a chassis ground here, which is nice. Look at all of these nice little bent angles on all of the hot lines. Cool. Um, so looking at this, the way that it's wired, again, this is just, um, this is gonna be my first impression of looking at this. So supply comes in here it wires directly to this 15 amp pot breaker. So this is a hot, this is a hot. Um, and then the hots wire to the switch here. Oh, the neutral wires to the switch too, that's cool. Oh, it has a light in it, okay, that makes sense. So here's my neutral sum right here. There's not a neutral bus, they just have, this is crimped. And so it looks like a wire nut, but it is in fact crimped. Um, and then they, okay. Cool. All right, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna make this a, um, a receptacle. So it, this is a male, we're just gonna make it a female. That's the easiest way to, to just deal with that because it has this, this um, cable grommet in here. So in order to take this out, you have to break it and then there's a hole there and then I have nothing really to fill that hole. So I'm just gonna make this uh, a male, or excuse me, a female um, outlet. And that'll actually be kind of cool for the install because if you have something that's a big power brick like a wall ward or something, this gives you a nice place to put that in. Um, if I could get true connectors at the moment, I would probably make this a true connector so that you could have something locking, but those have been on back order for months now also. So I think I'm just gonna go with the regular Edison um, outlet there. So, uh, all right, cool. I'm gonna take all of this apart and then we are gonna sync a power con right here. Okay, so I've got my hole. This is basically center. So a rack space is one and three quarters um, tall. So half of that is just seven eighths. So uh, that's just seven eighths. And then I sort of eyeballed this as being two inches. So this hole is gonna be uh, my center hole. So to put the power con jack in here, just like this, uh, I'm gonna use a punch. Uh, so basically the way that this piece of gear works is, um, this is a 15 16 inch hole. Uh, that's a standard D series punch hole. 
Um, and the, basically the way that this guy works is we're gonna drill a hole right here. Uh, that's gonna allow this portion to go in. And there is a um, just a, a sharp sort of metal guy that goes on the bottom and it just sucks it through the panel and it leaves us a very, very nice looking hole. So I'm gonna do that. Thank you for uh, all of the uh, patience with the very non-technical jargon that we're using here. All right, so we've got our hole drilled. Um, certainly not the easiest way of, of drilling a D-punch. Um, so I'm just gonna take this into the shop right now and blow it out with an air gun. Um, there's so many metal shavings and things that we're kind of going around. I just wanna make sure that all that stuff is clean. So we'll uh, check that out. Okay, so the way that this is wired, uh, power comes in through here. This is our main supply. Our neutrals are summed. Um, and then uh, here is our, our line and our load side of the uh, little pot breaker here. So uh, obviously the line side is uh, power coming in and then the load side is, is post breaker. So the way that this works is power comes in from our supply here, goes into the line side, here's the load, it goes out of the load, into the switch, from the switch it goes to our first uh, outlet here and then these are all wired together. So what we need to do now is change this so that these, so that the supply side of these um, cables are now gonna come in from our power con. Um, we can keep this all sort of summed together. We just need to change this um, so that our, the, the black cable here, which is our line supply side, actually hits this outlet. So this output cable is just gonna hit the, uh, the last outlet in the chain. So we'll uh, get that going. Okay, so um, I, I disconnected my neutrals here because I just figured this was gonna be a lot easier to wire. Of course, this is a little short. It's not gonna reach this other outlet. So I just need to tap this from my from my hotline. So um, I can either, I haven't decided if I'm gonna either use a little Wago or I'm gonna use a butt splice, but either way. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I do wanna get my supply in. So these power cons, there's uh, an L for hot, an N for neutral, and then obviously a ground. So uh, the internal wiring in here is using 14 gauge wire. So I just took a piece of scrap SO that I had laying around and just cut the exterior jacketing off because this is so much easier to use than hard wire in this. So um, I'm gonna use a female disconnect for this. So this just slides on here, just like that. Um, I'm just gonna crimp these on and then we'll get this mounted once we have our, our super long tails and then we'll uh, we'll trim them. It's, it's gonna be way easier to get this on, uh, the little disconnects on this once it's out of the chassis before we mount it. So we'll get that going. Okay, so we've got our power con mounted in here. Um, so let's start getting this wired up. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get our line side 
in on here. So I'm just gonna trim this guy back. And this is gonna be another crimp connector. Let's just make sure that fits before we put that on there. Hate to go through that whole process again if the disconnect didn't fit. So this is the line side of our fuse. Now the load side can go back just like we had it. Or I should say they had it. The fine, fine folks at the AAA Corporation. And I had this cool little boot that went on here. So the next thing that we need to, to, to tackle is uh, our neutrals here. So I'm gonna use a Wago for that. And I'm also gonna use a Wago for um, the grounds. I've got this chassis ground. We're going to keep that separate and because that's just going to go back to the lid piece. But for our neutrals here, let's get these guys taken care of. So for this part, um, I need a little extension here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, it doesn't, uh, my neutrals don't match or don't go over to this. So Let's see, I'm gonna walk out of my work box. I'm either gonna come back with a butt splice or another Wago, let's see. Okay, so even though I had to use a butt splice, I used a, a heat shrink butt splice, so it'll be a, a little bit more secure. Um, so the last thing that we need to do here is, so we've got power coming in. Um, I need to sum my neutral or excuse me, my grounds here. So here's my chassis ground. The ground for this is summed already at a post. Um, so again, I'm just going to use another way ago for that. Let's bring that out here. Hopefully we have better luck with the ground versus the neutral. That was, that was painful. Okay, and this is our chassis ground here. Now the last little bit we need to address here is the hotline, um, which I think is probably just gonna be the easiest to, uh, to take it right here. Again, I'm just gonna use another Wago for that. Um, because this isn't hard wire, I'm not going to be able to stick it into the back of this, this last outlet. So I'm just going to take the tap right here, um, off of the, uh, the, uh, the output section of the, uh, switch. Okay. Got this all wired up. Let's, uh, just get this outlet back in. Okay, um, so let's get this guy off of here, and uh, we'll we'll change this out with a uh, a female receptacle. So I like to use Lex connectors. Um, as far as a regular Edison goes, these these really rock. All you have to do is just uh, open this little this little lever right here, and you don't really need any tools to to terminate these, which I like. So I'm just going to take this uh, cable gland out of here. All right, all we have to do now is just put power to this thing. Let's see if it works. So when I, anytime I rewire something like this, I always just want to make sure that there isn't anything on the chassis that's live before I touch it, just in case I miss something. And we're okay. So if we test our first connection here, we are correct. We'll just grab an outlet on the way. And we're correct.
All right, cool. So uh, that's how you rewire a Triplight RS1215 to have a PowerCon input. Thanks for stopping by. If anybody has any questions, just uh, drop a comment below. Thanks.